Well, folks, today we got a bunch of news to bring to you, so you know what? I figured it was only appropriate to come back on our other set here and give you all the latest news from Nintendo. We got brand new rumors coming out on upcoming video games, some of them for Nintendo Switch, too. But setting rumors aside, because that's actually the smallest portion of what we're talking about today, we got updates on brand new Christmas bundles coming your way, new sales on one of the biggest accessories ever released for Switch. One of the game changers that have made a lot of you people have a lot more fun with your Nintendo Switch, especially in portable mode. And it's something that's as cheap as it's ever been. So I'm really excited about that. Well, we have updates on Nintendo Switch Online and just a whole bunch more. Like this is a pretty packed episode. We got like six big stories. So I don't wanna waste too much of your time with this preamble. I just wanna remind you that we are on a road to 150,000 subscribers. I would appreciate if you would drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and you know what? Ringling that dingling to be notified of all future uploads. <laughs> And our first story deals with, well, yet another Christmas bundle coming your way. A surprise bundle, one Nintendo didn't even officially announce or advertise, but they happen to be releasing on November 20th. And, well, wouldn't you know, it's more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. There's a bit more to this story, though, but whew, go ahead, buckle up, strap in, and let's talk about Mario Kart bundles. Yay. Don't worry, they still have the standard Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bundle. They released that back in October 6th. Uh, they're just bringing back a bundle that was brand new last year, and that is a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bundle for the Nintendo Switch OLED. Because they couldn't possibly bundle anything else, you know? Like Mario Odyssey's a 2017. How about a Breath of the Wild bundle? I, I'm just saying, something different. Give us something fresh. <sighs> Anyways, this is according to Bill Bill Kun, who said the bundle will drop in Europe and the United States from a report he posted over on Dio Labs. It'll be launching at $349.99 here in the United States, or in other words, the standard price of a Switch OLED. It's going to be the neon blue and neon red version of the OLED, so you're going to get those standard Joy-Con colors, and it will include a three-month individual sub to Nintendo Switch Online. So I guess you get to play the DLC free for three months. Uh, well, maybe. Uh, whatever. Anyways, there's no dedicated design on the system, and it's just going to have its own little box design, and it's going to be releasing on November 20th. But here's the thing. We joke about them overusing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but it's technically not the only bundle this holiday. We obviously know about the pack-in Animal Crossing New Horizons bundles they did with Switch Lite that they also launched on October 6th and are available right now. But there's actually a Nintendo Switch Sports Standard Switch bundle dropping on October 20th, or, well, I guess it already dropped, right? Anyways, that one was for $299. It's also neon red and blue and features no custom designs on the system, just the box. Many are sort of talking about this new Mario Kart 8 Deluxe OLED bundle as the quote unquote final bundle for Switch. But that's certainly hard to say even after Switch 2's likely launch next year. We can't rule out bundles of games with Switch systems next holiday and really throughout the rest of the Switch's life it, look, they could literally bundle any game they want moving forward just to get rid of extra stock. I mean, look, they could stop producing Switches and still release new bundles. So I'm not buying that this is like the last time we're going to get bundles. I mean, let's just be honest. We're probably getting a Nintendo Switch Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bundle next holiday because they'll probably just have extras of these just sitting on a warehouse shelf somewhere. So whatever. It is what it is. You know, I, I get a little old talking about the same sort of bundle every holiday. I mean, yeah, there's an OLED one this time, which they also did last year, so technically not even new. I guess we have Switch Sports, but yeah. I, look, I just wish Nintendo would consider something that isn't just family bundles. Can we get some more serious game bundles? Like, what's stopping them from putting Breath of the Wild bundled in for a holiday season, especially with Tears of the Kingdom. We could actually encourage people to pick up Tears of the Kingdom by getting a, a system that comes with the first game, then you buy the second game to go with the system. I... <sighs> oh well. Anyways, let's get into our next story. Now this one's pretty neat because one of the best accessories for Nintendo Switch has hit its lowest price ever. So since it came out, we've never been able to get it for this price. Although there's a few limitations and this sale is happening through Amazon. We're talking about the split pad Hori controller, right, for your Nintendo Switch that replaces your Joy-Cons, but whew, there's a few caveats to this, or one really big one. So 
here's the Amazon listing. Now, what you see is actually a coupon sale at Amazon that only applies to one version, the Hori Split Pad Compact version. Color, light gray and yellow. Yeah, you heard me right, a coupon. When you visit the Amazon page, be sure under the free return section to check the coupon box to apply a $15 discount, knocking it down to $34.99, which is, we double checked, the cheapest you've ever been able to get these. If I had to guess why such a deal is happening on new versions of the split pad rather than used ones, uh, probably the colorway probably because having too much stock of this particular version. That's right, this sale doesn't apply to any other version. It's only this exact colorway. So again, probably too many of these in the back room that aren't selling. Still, having used the compact version myself in the past, it's just as good as the rest, but you are stuck with just the one color choice. Maybe you could trick some other retail outlet to sort of honor this coupon for a different one, but I significantly doubt that since they'll just click on other versions and see that it's not for sale. So uh, whatever, hey, you know what? I still wanted to bring this deal to you because I'm gonna be honest, if you only play in handheld mode and you don't wanna use one of those grips out there, you'd rather just have native controllers, you're tired of Joy-Con drift and everything else, these are really the best replacements that are out there and they've been there since like year one of Switch and despite the millions of other options out there, nothing's really been better than the split pads. So, hey, whether you like the colors or not, this is a pretty killer deal that might solve a lot of your frustrations when gaming on the go. Oh, and I almost walked up before telling you, we got an affiliate link down in the description for you guys just to go directly purchase this. Well, folks, we finally did it. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Woo! We got an update, everyone, on Hogwarts Legacy for Nintendo Switch. Oh, I've been waiting for this, right? Finally, they must have shown us the game, right? Like, God, it comes out November 14th. We must, they must have finally given us that Switch tri No. No, we still have some screenshots they gave us like a couple weeks ago, but, uh, no, actually, it's a bunch of bad news because they're doing some bad things yet again. Uh, apologies for now showing you footage of the game from other platforms since I can't show you anything from Switch. Thanks a lot, WB. Anyways, what's going on? Well, yeah, the game's releasing on November 14th, and even though we don't have gameplay of the Switch version beyond a few screenshots, we now have details on the physical version that was hidden away a little bit on the Port Key Games support webpage. Because of course, you don't want this on the official website for Hogwarts Legacy. Why, why be forthcoming with information? Make us dig for it. They're probably trying to avoid negative publicity, but I think they're gonna get it anyways. Well, the game will require you to download an additional eight gigabytes of data on day one to even play it. And this is if you buy the physical version. Obviously, if you buy digital, you gotta download the whole thing anyways. And it notes approximately seven gigabytes of the game is available on the cartridge. That means WB cheaped out and used the absolute cheapest physical cart they could, making us download more than half the game. What's worse is if you want to add additional language support beyond the language that comes with your version of the game in your given country, it's an additional 1.5 gigabytes of space per language added. Now, I probably would have been cool with that being an extra download if they had made that the only thing you can optionally download and instead use the widely available 16 gigabyte cartridges which would have got rid of the required download altogether. This does make you, well, <laughs> wonder a bit about Nintendo Switch 2 when third parties are still doing this. Even if they make them cheaper and higher capacity, nothing's really stopping third parties from cheaping out on physical cards every time to force us to download a majority of the game. Every game. And you know what? For a system that's on the go, that's kind of sucks because the thing's not always connected to the internet. <sighs> I don't know, guys. We've been getting this all throughout the Nintendo Switch generation, so we really shouldn't be surprised, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't be any less disappointed. Obviously, right now, our main concern is that we actually have a quality port of the game, which the screenshots look fine, but again, without showing any gameplay, it shows a severe lack of confidence in this port. So at least it's running natively and not a cloud version, but yeah, I, I guess we'll just have to wait for that. I, I just, I'm, I'm so used to this news at this point, but it's not, 
any more or any less disappointing than it than ever. I just I, I'm really concerned we're gonna see this just continue for Switch 2, even when cartridge prices might be a little bit cheaper. Well, we did cover this next piece of news a little bit on one of our live streams, and I always encourage people to watch at least the first hour of our live streams every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, because we do go over some additional news we don't always cover in that daily video, especially when we're focusing on Switch 2 so much. But a new game was added to Nintendo Switch Online today. Mario Party 3 is now available in the N64 app on your Switch. So that's really cool, and it's nice to have that out there. That does leave 1080 Snowboarding as the final game here in the United States that they announced over a year ago for the N64 app. And if I had to guess, they might be planning to drop that during the winter season, the snow season, because we're not quite there yet. So that could be something that really fits in with the spirit of the season. And then there is also Harvest Moon 64 out in Japan. They are waiting on that as well. And that was announced over a year ago for them. So kind of interesting that we've been waiting over a year for games that they promised last September. And when I say last September, I actually mean September of 2022. Kind of crazy, I have to say that now, just to clarify how long ago it was they promised us these games. And we have no promise of future N64 games after this. So while we've been getting some random NES and SNES games sort of dropped in that weren't announced, it does sort of feel like this might be after 1080 Snowboarding comes out, the last major like N64 and up games added to the platform. I'm not saying we're not going to get more NES and SNES. I just sort of think Nintendo's going to rest for a moment, waiting to announce the Switch 2. And then from that point forward, it will be very interesting to see when they announce new games for NSO. Are they going to be Switch 2 only? Or are some of them still going to go also to Switch? Cross-platform? Again, there's a lot of unknowns with the service as we transition. And I think those unknowns might be why they might stop adding games for a smidge, like the first half of next year after 1080. I can see them taking a three, four month break of adding games just so they could sort out how they want to transfer these services to the new platform. But again, that's just speculation at this point for now. Hey, enjoy your Mario Party 3, everyone. Now we're gonna end with a bit of a rumor. Well, not a bit of one, it is a rumor. And it comes from a source of questionable veracity. We're talking about Zippos. So some of you guys will automatically dismiss this look. I know, okay, sometimes he's right, sometimes he's wrong. He was right quite a bit when it came to Mario Wonder stuff, so we'll just have to roll with the punches here. I can't verify any of this stuff. I don't know anyone at Nintendo to verify. But what did he talk about here and why are we talking about it? Well, because it's a little bit fun to talk about. Super Mario Brothers 3 Remake. Yeah, folks, what? Let's get to his exact quotes on his blog. Internally, Nintendo has apparently been having, and to directly quote the sources here, so sources, more than one, serious discussions about a brand new remake of Super Mario Bros. 3. The game was famously remade 30 years ago. I call it more of a remastering 30 years ago. Anyways, in the masterwork that is Super Mario All-Stars. It also got an array of new levels in the GBA version that was released in 2003. This is just a game Nintendo can't leave alone. Of course, he mentions the last time they really did anything to do with it was 20 years ago. So I could argue they've pretty much left it alone outside of NSO editions. Anyways, I'm hoping they decide to say yes on this one. I'm all for remaking timeless classics as long as the developers in question understand the task at hand. And then he goes on to add some more here. Not just that, but you can expect to see a plethora of remakes of Nintendo games featured on their next console. Some will be remakes of some of their biggest titles, and some will be obscure titles you haven't seen in a very long time. Expect to see some of those in the first year of the system's life. Holy crap, Zippo, what are you telling me right now? We're gonna get remakes and remasters on Nintendo Switch 2? No, whoa, breaking news, everyone. We're gonna keep getting remakes and remasters like we've been getting for 30 years. Oh my gosh, let's go! Okay, guys, I mean, come on. That last part he added is a dumb moment. It's a person who wants to be credible 
throwing something out there that's guaranteed to happen because Nintendo's just been doing it forever. We've been getting remakes and remasters across many systems literally for decades. Nothing new. He literally referenced Super Mario Bros. 3 getting remastered in Super Mario Bros. All-Stars back on the Super Nintendo. Now, obviously, the remake is cool. Uh, he's not even saying that it's happening. He's saying they've had discussions. The only kind of people that would have those sort of discussions and would be like decision makers and decision makers are in Japan and typically, you know, management positions. I'm not so sure if Zippo's claiming he knows people in management positions. Multiple sources in management positions seems pretty far fetched. This feels like one of those times that like a random fan would fake like information and email it to me claiming that their uncle works at Nintendo and they got all this exclusive information and it's like information that it would be so locked down internally at Nintendo that it would be impossible for a position like a person in the position they claim that they work or their uncle works to even have. Oh yeah, they work at Nintendo Treehouse at Nintendo of America. Yeah, okay, Treehouse has nothing to do with decision making on what games are Nintendo of Japan's going to actually work on. So they wouldn't even know. They would only know about games that are already in production because they would be working on, you know, translating the game and, 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 and testing the game, right? So, uh, anyways, take it for what you will. I would like to see Super Mario Bros. 3 remade, but then does it need to be remade? I've talked about this before. Super Mario Bros. 3 is practically perfection. Do you just, I guess, can give us a 1080p widescreen remaster? I don't, I don't know, guys. You guys, is this something you would even be interested in? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. This is Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. I guess this is sort of one of those Prime News episodes I haven't done in ages. But you know what? Thanks for tuning in. And I guess, you know, we got to get to the old catchphrase. Hold on. <clears throat> How many remember this one? And this is Prime News. Wait. This? We got to... Hold on. Hold on. We're at the end. Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> And that was Prime News. Yeah, I think that's it. Nailed it.